I was looking at the titles and I noticed a pattern that everything was about real world, real life stuff, which is very unusual compared to what I would normally do, you know. Um, yeah. Obviously, I did do occasional dips into reality and stuff in the past, but it was mainly for very personal stuff and very sparingly as well. Um, but I noticed that everything here is about things that could happen to real people, you know, and um, some of them are autobiographical as well. And some of them, if they haven't happened to you, they've happened to somebody that you know somewhere along the line, you know. <laughs> Trying to put that into a title for an album is quite tricky, as you can imagine, especially considering almost every title in the world has been taken already. So, yes, of um, and uh, verity pretty much means truth or reality. So, did you find this album came quite naturally to you, or um, have you had ups and downs when making it? I don't say this lightly at all, even if it comes across perhaps it's probably the hardest. And uh, you're probably thinking he said that a few times before <laughs> on uh, on these videos, but it's definitely taken the um, the top spot off of things like Loaded Question and uh, Picture of Intrigue as uh, ramping the challenge up to somewhere I didn't expect. Anyway, one of the unique points is um, that it's improvisational based. I've done loads of improv in the past, but I've never had to make an album work entirely with it all the way for 45 minutes and um it took a lot longer to make because there was a lot of false starts with um not quite understanding how to make it flow um that way um because yeah, cool. i couldn't have choruses anymore because it would have kind of ruined the point do you have a um a favorite track on the album or one that really speaks to you I think Ponder On still does the trick. I mean, it's the oldest one of the bunch. It goes right back to 2020, I think. Absolutely. It's a great song, too. It's uh, really enjoyed listening to that one. It definitely adds a bit more variety to the album as well. It's a tricky thing with this kind of instrumental stuff to um, to get the variety. So there's all kinds of tricks you can play that you learn over a long period of time of making these things. There's structural things you probably wouldn't expect in there. Um, I'm talking over the spread of of the album itself. You know, yeah. there's some odd drum breaks and sort of gem sort of weird breaks in general. You know, like on Subtle as a Brick, there's a reason why it's called that. And it's also placed in a position on the track list to be to double down and definitely be a Subtle as a Brick. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's kind of a joke, uh, not my own expense, but kind of a a wink wink joke, I guess. There's always going to be some piece of sarcasm lurking in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> the equipment for this album, uh, I mean, if anything, slightly stripped back, but also more technical than ever. Even even though I knew how to use the THU by the time I was making the previous one. I still managed to get more out of it this time because it's just human nature, isn't it? Because I was quite insistent on reamping almost everything after it was done, uh, it does make a big difference because previous on the previous one, I only reamped what I felt needed to be. Whereas with this one, I, I went to the mix and pretty much pulled everything apart and said, OK, think about it as two separate things, the recording sound and the mix sound i'm sure a lot of people would be sort of screaming at this thinking don't touch things if you don't need to but i think it really did i, th I think you learn when it helps and when it's really messing things up and i think you said something quite poignant to me the other day when you said that now with the reamping you can actually make the find the guitar sound that you actually wanted rather than settling with what you've got and it's also the the vital thing i think is the cutting through um is way better when you can do that especially with most of these songs have different drum kits so yeah. you don't you don't just learn how to cut with one drum kit you have to work it around all kinds of different ones you know yeah, um, and so having the reamping for that is amazing and it helps with things like wah as well because you can reamp how the wah cuts and things like that you know
the last one for the um, Scarlet after yeah, after all this time. The old eighteen oh eight. It would have been cruel to have done another album on that that thing. The poor thing. You know what I'm like. I'll keep something for as long as I can. And uh, it really did not like whatever the combination of, of Windows eleven and and this computer it was never going to really work. Guitar wise, it's fairly simple. I mean, it was almost dominated, I would say, by the GNL ASAP. It's quite a um, chameleon, that guitar. You know, you can kind of make it sound an awful lot uh, chunkier than it should ever be allowed to sound. <laughs> yeah. Or or you could do what I did on the closing track and make it sound very Fender. It kind of adjusts to whatever you want, I think, the, the GNL. <laughs> Whereas the PGM, which was the one that did three of the ballads, it's really, really, really flexible, but you can't, this is probably a good thing, you really cannot hide its personality at all. TV Yellow, Les Paul, um, got to do, I think, maybe three songs here. Um, and again, most of the time I can tell when it's that one. <laughs>
obviously there's no prizes for guessing the choice of base. Um, yeah, the old uh, vintage modified is still there. You know, it's the, you, you can't even buy that anymore. I think I think it's been um, superseded by the the classic vibe uh, version took it over. Um, yes. And I hear yeah, it's even better. That's, I mean, it's got Squire bass, isn't it? Squire jazz bass. I think it's the oldest sort of fully working thing here. It's like 13 now. I think I recognised a long time ago, if something is that special and efficient, there's, you just leave it and don't buy another one. It's a lightning in a bottle kind of situation, I guess. So yeah. I've, I've showed my appreciation ever since. <laughs> <laughs> people will need to know where they can listen to your album please joe it should be on your streaming service of choice and i i would say if it's not um I, i've tried to cover that as well by uh making it completely streamable off the website and on my youtube channel as well because it, it'll be on youtube music the streaming service but it'll be on the channel in, in visualizer form as well we are obviously looking forward to the new album uh everybody needs to get out there give it a listen um and be surprised by the new direction of this album i hope so yeah um, always trying to catch people a little, a little bit unawares you know and um hopefully hopefully it's happened this time with enough variation and all of the meticulous reamping that happened <laughs> I know it'll be good. I guess get on the streaming services, get on YouTube, drop Joe a message. Yeah, I, I do. Always, um, appreciate it. Always like a chat about what you've done. Yeah, I do actually respond to stuff. Right. Well, um, looking forward to the album, and we'll see you next time, Joe. All right. Cheers, fella. See you in a couple of years. <laughs> well, a couple of days in our case. Yes.